Dillian White, born April 11, 1988, is a British professional boxer who has formerly competed as a kickboxer and mixed martial artist. He has held the WBC interim heavyweight title twice between 2019 and 2022. At regional level, he has held multiple heavyweight championships, including the British title from 2016 to 2017. As of October 2021, he is ranked as the world's fifth best active heavyweight by The Ring magazine and the fourth best active heavyweight by the Transnational Boxing Rankings Board and BoxRec. He has been ranked among BoxRec's top 10 heavyweights since 2016, reaching his career-high ranking of number 2 at the end of August 2021. His knockout-to-win percentage stands at 68%. White is also a former kickboxing champion, having held the Bikma British Super Heavyweight title and the European K-1 title, and has competed professionally in mixed martial arts. Early Life White was born in Port Antonio, Portland, Jamaica, on April 11, 1988. White moved with his family to the United Kingdom when he was 12. His paternal grandfather was an Irishman named Patrick White, who emigrated to Jamaica from Dublin, Ireland. Regarding his education, White has spoken of his performance at school in England, while adding, I had no schooling at all when I lived in Jamaica. As White has mentioned publicly, he had a difficult upbringing in Jamaica, where he was dodging bullets. White grew up in Brixton, London and fought at Miguel's boxing gym. He had spoken of the influence boxing has had upon his early life, by stating, I didn't do too well at school, to be honest, but boxing saved me and changed my life. And it was going well, because I knew it was my best chance in life. Professional kickboxing career Originally, White was a professional kickboxer, to which he became two-time British heavyweight champion by claiming the Bigma Super Heavyweight title and one-time European K-1 champion, while being ranked UK number one for five years in his weight category of 95 kg plus comma, ending his kickboxing career with a K-1 record of 20 to 1, before then turning to MMA. Highlights defeated Daniel Sam, UK, UD3, lost to Chris Knowles, UK, went to a deciding round for Knowles to become the new Pain and Glory UK K1 champion, UD4, defeated Wilriva, UK, to claim the WPKL British heavyweight title KO3, professional mixed martial arts career White made his professional MMA debut on 6 December 2008, at the Ultimate Challenge MMA, on the James McSweeney vs. Neil Grove undercard, where he defeated Mark Stroud with a right cross only 12 seconds into the round wink with a frown, ultimately winning by knockout, KO, at the Troxy. Amateur boxing career In his first amateur bout, in 2009, aged 20, White beat Anthony Joshua by unanimous decision over three rounds. He had stated prior to the fight that his trainer Chris Oko admitted that the decision to agree to the fight was then considered a risk, albeit ultimately accepting the fight to which White had stated, but I said I'd take it. Sometimes you've just got to take opportunities when they come. He left one of his amateur opponents in a coma for several weeks due to a KO. Citation needed, White had a limited amateur record, 6 0 5 KOs, because of a dispute with the ABA regarding his kickboxing background, which led him to turn professional in 2011, although trainer Oko wanted him to remain amateur, White signed with boxing promoter Frank Maloney. After friends of Maloney witnessed sparring sessions White had with David Hay and former UFC light heavyweight champion Quinton Jackson. Professional boxing career Early career White made his professional debut on May 13, 2011. He fought Tyre Memd and won via points decision, PTS, in the fourth round, obtaining the decision of 40-36. On September 16, 2011, White made his second professional appearance against his Lithuanian heavyweight journeyman opponent Remigijas Syazis. White ultimately won by PTS in the fourth round, obtaining the decision of 40-37. On December 3, 2011 White defeated Croatian Tony Vizic, winning by technical knockout, TKO, in the third round due to referee Jeff Hines stopping the fight at 1 minute 46 seconds. The next fight for White was against veteran journeyman Hastings Rassani on January 21, 2012 at the Liverpool Olympia in Liverpool. 
White scored a PTS win based over Rasani, making it his third win on points. For his fifth professional bout, White defeated Bulgarian Christian Kurlov by TKO in the first round at the Troxy Limehouse on 2 March 2012, which was followed by an additional TKO in his sixth bout in the first round on May 19, 2012 against Georgian Zerub Naniashvili at the Aintree Racecourse, Liverpool. White went on to fight Hungarian giant Gabor Farkas at the York Hall in London on July 7, 2012, winning by second round KO wink with a frown, it marked the first KO victory in White's professional career. Two months later, on September 15, 2012, White challenged former British heavyweight champion Mike Holden to a bout scheduled for six rounds. Holden was put down once in the second and twice in the third round, to which referee Jeff Hines stopped the fight. White's last fight of 2012 was against Sandor Ballo, which took place in Bluewater, Greenhith, Kent on the James DeGale undercard when DeGale fought Hadilia Mohamedy for the European super middleweight title on October 13, 2012. White won the bout but was later stripped of the win due to testing positive for banned substances. Drug ban a sample for an in-competition drugs test that White had provided after his victory over Hungary's Sandor Ballo on October 13 was examined and subsequently tested positive for the banned stimulant methylhexaniamine, MHA. Dot. The revelation came while White was en route to a news conference to announce a fight for the English title. The UK Anti-Doping organization confirmed that White was provisionally suspended from all competition from 5 November 2012. An independent national anti-doping panel, NADP, found that the case warranted a two-year ban. However, White appealed the ban, though the appeal panel retorted by emphasizing the confirmed two-year ban. The tribunal had accepted White's claim that he did not knowingly take MHA, but rejected his appeal because he did not do enough to check the supplements. Ingredients, as Charles Flint QC, the chairman of the Appeal Tribunal, explained in his written verdict. In its first instance decision, the NADP found that White failed to seek professional or medical advice before using the supplement Jack 3 d which he had bought over the counter from a nutritional supplement shop. Consequently, they stated that he had failed to discharge the burden of establishing that he was not significantly at fault and therefore could not reduce his sanction from two years. The appeal panel agreed with this decision, stressing that the case emphasized the dangers of athletes taking supplements which contain MHA. White was thereby banned from all competition with a period of ineligibility from October 13, 2012 to October 12, 2014, and the result against Ballo disqualified, as White and company exercised the right to appeal under Article 13.4.1, they had no further right to appeal under the rules. Return to the ring White was cleared to compete from 12 October 2014, since his two-year ban by UKAD and returned to boxing on November 21, 2014 at the Camden Centre in London to fight Anti Veronica, a fight which lasted all of two rounds as White delivered a hard shot that forced a stoppage from referee Jeff Hines for a TKO victory. On November 28, one week after his fight with Veronica, White returned to the Camden Centre and put on another dominating display stopping Tomas Morazek, with White knocking the durable Morazek down three times in the third round. On December 20, 2014, White scored another TKO win, this time over heavyweight Hope Kamil Sokolowski in three rounds at the City Hall in Hull. White followed up his Sokolowski win with a KO victory over Marcelo Luis Nascimento on February 7, 2015 at the Camden Center, to which the Brazilian had never been stopped as quickly in his career. White's next fight after Nascimento was against undefeated Bika Lobjanitz, which took place on February 28 in the Odyssey Arena in Belfast, on the undercard of the World Is Not Enough Belfast boxing card featuring Carl Frampton's defense against Christopher Avalos for the IBF junior featherweight title. White scored a fourth-round stoppage over Lobjanitz in a scheduled 10-round bout, as White landed a hard left to the side of the head which sent Lobjanitz to the canvas and he was unable to beat referee Phil Edwards' count at 1 minute 10 seconds of round 4, winning by KO. On August 1, 2015, White faced Irene Beato Costa Jr. at the KC Lightstream Stadium in Hull, on the undercard of Rumble on the Humber featuring Luke Campbell's clash against Tommy Coyle in a WBC lightweight eliminator, White sent the Brazilian crashing backwards to the canvas, 
and referee Michael Alexander stopped the fight with 2 minutes 41 seconds remaining in the first round as White put Costa back to the floor with a right hand. Following his victory over Costa, it was announced that White would face Brian Minto at the O2 Arena for the WBC International Silver Heavyweight title on the undercard of Anthony Joshua's title clash with Gary Cornish on 12 September. He defeated Minto by KO in the third round, having already knocked him down once in the first round. British and Commonwealth title challenge White vs. Joshua on September 14, 2015, it was announced that White would fight old rival Anthony Joshua for the vacant British heavyweight title on December 12 at the O2 Arena in London on Sky Sports box office. Joshua was able to use his power to hurt White in the first round. He appeared hurt again in the second round but was able to catch Joshua with a counterpunch and follow it up, leaving Joshua visibly shaken. White also landed several body shots towards the end of the round. This continued somewhat in the third round with Joshua still looking tired and stiff-legged. As the rounds went on, Joshua regained his composure and took control. White took many hard shots before coming back with his own, his chin has since been lauded by critics, White was rocked again in the seventh round from a heavy right hand to the temple. Joshua was able to follow through and landed an uppercut that put White down through the ropes and knocked him out. Return victories following the loss to Joshua, White spent some time recovering from a shoulder surgery and returned to the boxing ring on Joshua's first world title defense at the O2 Arena on June 25, 2016. Prior to the fight, White signed a deal with Matchroom Sport, White defeated Evitsa Bukharin via KO. White started off slow, before working on the jab and knocking Bakurin out with a right hand. White next fought at the first direct arena in Leeds on July 30 against David Allen for the vacant WBC international heavyweight title. In what was expected to be a tough fight for White, the fight went the full 10-round distance. White won the fight with a comfortable UD, with the judges scoring the fight 100-90, 100-91, and 99-91. British champion it was announced on September 19 that White would fight domestic veteran Ian Lewison for the vacant British heavyweight title in Glasgow on the undercard of Ricky Burns vs. Kirill Relick on 7 October, White and Lewison had to be separated at the weigh-in press conference. Both fighters promised KOs, White defeated Lewison to claim the vacant title via 10th round stoppage victory. The fight was stopped in round 10 by Lewison's corner. It appeared that he had a nose problem that caused the fight to be halted. Although Lewison looked good from the opening bell, White started taking control from round 3 onwards. In round 10, Lewison turned his back to started blowing his nose. White missed with a big right hand. From there on, Lewison started boxing defensively before the fight was eventually stopped, declaring White the winner. White vs. Kazora terms were finally agreed for a fight between White and bitter London rival Derek Kazora, 26-6 with 18 knockouts, to fight in a WBC title eliminator. White and Kazora had been feuding over the year through social media. The fight took place on Sky Box Office in the UK on the undercard off Anthony Joshua vs. Eric Molina for the IBF heavyweight title. The fight was slated to be White's first defense of the British heavyweight title he won against Lewison. However, at the final press conference on December 7, following White's comment that he'd attack Kazora any time he sees him after the fight, Kazora picked up the table he was sitting at and threw it towards White, just missing everyone in the way which included the promoters and trainers. As a result, the British Boxing Board of Control withdrew their sanction of the fight and the British title would not be at stake. White's WBC international title was at stake instead. In a contest in which both fighters were hurt, with Kazora and White showing a lot of heart, White won via split decision, SD. Two judges scoring the fight 115 to 113 and 115 to 114 for White, and one scoring 115 to 114 in favor of Kazora. White was hurt a number of times in the fight by Kazora, in the 8th, 10th and 12th rounds. On two occasions in the 12th, White was knocked off balance by Kazora after being hit with huge shots to the head. Post-fight, White stated he would not give Kazora a rematch but changed his mind later saying he would be open to a rematch. 
Rise up the ranks in April 2017 it was announced that White would headline a card at the O2 Arena on June 3, 2017. White listed Bryant Jennings, Mario Schwach, Artur Spilka and Gerald Washington as potential opponents. On April 14, Washington put his name forward wanting to get back into the world title mix following his failed attempt to dethrone WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder in February 2017. On April 19, Matchroom Boxing revealed White's opponent would be 37-year-old former world title challenger Mario Schwach, 33-2 with 17 knockouts. The fight was to take place live on Sky Sports and would also feature younger talents including Reese Bellotti, Ted Cheeseman, and Lawrence Oakley. The fight was postponed on May 16 due to White injuring his foot. There was no immediate mention as to when the fight would be rescheduled for. In early June, promoter Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing confirmed that White would be making his U.S. debut in the summer of 2017 in order to earn himself a potential world title shot by the end of the year. On July 25, Hearn announced that White would fight 44-year-old former world title challenger Michael Grant, 48-7 with 36 knockouts, who was on a three-fight losing streak since 2013. Grant had only fought once since October 2014, which took place in April 2017 in a KO loss to Christoph Simnok. Grant unsuccessfully challenged then-unified heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis in 2000. The fight lasted less than six minutes, the announcement received a lot of criticism and bad press from the media and fans. Two days later, Grant confirmed the fight was cancelled. On August 6, after struggling to find an opponent, Hearn revealed that White would fight 15-year veteran Malcolm Tan, 24-5 with 13 knockouts, in a scheduled eight-round fight on the undercard of Terence Crawford v. Julius Ndongo. 90, White knocked Tan down four times en route to winning the fight via TKO in round three. White admitted he needed a bigger challenge towards the end of the year before a potential world title fight. White vs. Hellenius Eddie Hearn announced that White would fight on the Anthony Joshua vs. Carlos Takum, originally Kubrat Pulov, card on October 28 at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff. Robert Hellenius and Lucas Brown were two names mentioned. On September 14, seven weeks before the fight, Ricky Hatton stated Brown wouldn't take up the fight due to being short notice. Some reported suggested White would fight former two time European champion Robert Hellenius, 25 and 1 with 16 knockouts. Dot, after Luis Ortiz failed a drug test, leaving Deontay Wilder without an opponent, White offered to take his place. The world title fight was ultimately given to mandatory challenger Bermain Stivern for November 4. Gerald Miller was also considered an option before he booked himself a fight with Mario Schwach in New York. On October 4, Hearn revealed he was interested in getting Dominic Brazil to fight White, where the winner could potentially fight the winner of the Wilder vs. Stivern rematch. A couple of days later, Brazil accepted the challenge. The talks eventually broke down. On October 15, Hearn announced White vs. Hellenius. White failed to impress as he defeated Hellenius over 12 rounds via UD. The scorecards read 119 to 109 twice and 118 to 110 all in favor of White. Hellenius started the fight while well hurting White in the second round. White bounced back and dominated the remainder of the fight with Hellenius reluctant to throw anything meaningful to win the rounds. With the win, White claimed the vacant WBC silver heavyweight title, moving him a step closer to fighting world champion Wilder. White vs. Brown on January 11, 2018, a fight between White and Lucas Brown, 25-0, 22 KOs, was finally made to take place at the O2 Arena in London on March 24. White's WBC silver title would be at stake. Speaking of the fight, White said, I can't wait, I hate Lucas Brown and I want to hurt him. He said some nasty things and he's going to have to pay for them. White hit Brown with a hard left hook to the head in the round six to knock him unconscious, winning the fight. There was no count made and the fight was waved off immediately with ringside doctors attending to Brown before giving him oxygen. The fight was officially stopped at 37 seconds of the round. Brown's face was cut and badly swollen from the clean shots landed from White. Brown left himself open most of the time and tried switching stances after a few rounds. 
Brown suffered a cut over his left eye in round three, which got worse with each round. White then bloodied Brown's nose in round five. After the fight, Brown was stretchered from the ring and taken to a nearby hospital for precaution. In the post-fight interview, White called out WBC champion Deontay Wilder for a fight in June 2018. Promoter Eddie Hearn said, I hope the WBC make Dillian mandatory now, the fight is there for Deontay Wilder in June. We have to force the shot and after that performance, he deserves the shot. Hearn stated there could be a possibility that the WBC order a final eliminator between White and Dominic Brazil. White vs. Parker On April 24, the WBC ordered White vs. Luis Ortiz in an eliminator bout for their heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder. White felt betrayed by this decision from the WBC as he thought he was already in line to challenge Wilder next. The WBC made Dominic Brazil the mandatory challenger, although they previously confirmed his win over Eric Molina was not a final eliminator. White stated, if anything, the WBC should order White vs. Brazil as the final eliminator. Promoter Eddie Hearn was also puzzled by the decision. At the same time, the IBF also ordered White to fight former world title challenger Kubrat Pulov, 25-1, 13 KO. A purse bid was set for 10 May. The purse bids were delayed as a deal between Hearn and Team Sauerland, Pulov's promoter, was close to being agreed. The IBF gave them until May 24. Despite White stating that Pulov did not want the fight, Pulov stated he was more than happy to fight White, but a lot of things need to be agreed before the fight could be confirmed. According to Nis Sauerland, the date of July 28 was being discussed with the host venue being either London or Bulgaria. New York-based promotional company, Epic Sports and Entertainment, made a purse bid of $1,500,111, winning the rights of the fight. Eddie Hearn offered $831,111, which was higher than the $801,305 bid from Team Sauerland. IBF rules state, for a final eliminator, the higher-ranked boxer, in this case Pulov, would get 75%, $1,125,083.25, and White would earn $375,027.75 for the fight. On June 6, although the White vs. Pulov fight was not off the table, it was heavily rumored via multiple sources that White would instead fight Luis Ortiz in a WBC final eliminator. Many media outlets announced the fight. Pulev was unhappy with the pullout and labeled White and Hearn as extreme manipulators and plain schizophrenics as well as accusing them of avoiding him at all costs. On the morning of June 7, it was confirmed that White would instead fight former WBO heavyweight champion Joseph Parker, 24-1 with 18 knockouts, on July 28 at the O2 Arena in London on Skybox office. An official press conference followed a few hours later. Many fans took to social media stating their frustration around the fight being on pay-per-view. White, along with Parker's promoter David Higgins, explained their reasons as to why the fight deserved to be on the PPV platform. The fight itself was praised by fans for the matchup, with it being billed as an eliminator for the winner to challenge Anthony Joshua for the unified heavyweight titles. Three days before the fight, it was confirmed a sellout. It was revealed that before PPV revenue, both boxers would earn just over £1 million for the fight, with White receiving slightly more, being the home fighter. Despite stating he would weigh less, White came in at 258 plus a half pounds, four pounds heavier than his previous bout. Parker weighed 242 pounds, 16 pounds lighter than White, however, six pounds heavier than what he weighed in his loss to Joshua. White won the bout via UD in a fight which saw both boxers hit the canvas. White knocked Parker down twice in the fight, dropping him in rounds 2 and 9. It looked as though a short left hook dropped Parker for the first time in his career, however the instant replay showed it was a clash of heads. Referee Ian John Lewis made the count. Most of the middle rounds were mostly back-and-forth action with both fighters having success. White was coming forward, countering and began using his jab more while Parker was mostly on the back foot, using movement and landing two to three punch combinations. After round six, White began to show fatigue. 
This did not prevent him from carrying on going forward and trying to land big shots as Parker was wary of White's power. White also started using roughhouse tactics after the first few rounds. This included rabbit punches, headbutting, holding and hitting and pushing Parker over the ropes. He was warned once earlier in the fight and then warned again in the final rounds, however no points were deducted. Parker took over in the final rounds but was unable to put White away. Parker had an explosive start to round 12, knowing he needed a knockout to win, he eventually knocked down a fatigued White with 20 seconds left in the fight with a right hand to the head. White got to his feet and survived the remaining seconds of the fight. The three judges scored the fight unanimously 115 to 110, 114 to 111, and 113 to 112 in favor of White. Many of the pundits ringside, which included Steve Bunce, had the fight closer including those on radio, with some even having Parker as the winner. Some portion of the boxing media also scored the fight close, in favor of Parker. The Sky Sports team, which included Matthew Macklin, David Hay, Johnny Nelson and Tony Bellew, were criticized for their views. Standing together, speaking to Sky Sports after the fight, White gave Parker credit, he was slick and I knew he was going to fight for the first few rounds, then come back in the final few rounds. I am annoyed I slipped at the final hurdle in the last round. I was rocked and took a few. White stated he would take another fight before the end of 2018 and ready for Anthony Joshua in April 2019, I would like to fight Joshua again if he wants it. I've still got a lot to learn, so I would like to get one more in before him again. Parker had no complaints and humble in defeat, I gave it my best, the better man and I will come back stronger. Parker's trainer Kevin Barry was very vocal after the fight regarding White's rough tactics, claiming he should have had points taken off. In the post-fight press conference, Hearn spoke of White's next potential fights. Derek Kazora, who knocked out Carlos Takum on the undercard, was mentioned, however White stated he was not interested as he had bigger fish to fry. Hearn revealed he would offer Wilder in the region of £6 million, $8 million US, to fight White in New York. On July 31, White told Boxing Scene he was interested in fighting WBA regular champion Manuel Char. On August 3, it was reported that Duco Events would appeal for the decision to be investigated. The reason for this was because Parker's team believed the head clash in round two, which dropped Parker to the canvas, affected the scorecards as well as Parker's performance during the middle rounds. It is believed that Parker was having success in round two before the head clash, therefore had the knockdown not occurred, the round would have been scored 10 to 9 in favor of Parker instead 10 to 8 for White. In a statement, Higgins said, it's clear that the clash of heads in the second round had a significant impact on the fight. In terms of the scorecards and Joseph's performance in the middle rounds, the headbutt made a big difference. In light of what is clear evidence of a significant error by the officials, there is a legitimate question as to whether the result should stand. That's a question Duco will be asking the sanctioning bodies on Joseph's behalf. Looking at the alternative scorecard, having round two in favor of Parker would have resulted in the bout being scored a split decision draw. White vs. Kazora 2 In mid-October 2018, White and Luis Ortiz appeared to have a war of words and called each other out, with Ortiz stating he would come to the UK and fight White on December 22, a potential PPV date allocated to the possible White vs. Kazora rematch. After hearing this, Kazora came out saying no one wants to see that, White Ortiz, that he was the money man and White should fight him if he wants to earn more money, Hearn also stated despite Ortiz putting his name forward, Kazora was the frontrunner to fight White. On October 17, it was reported that Kazora had hired former rival David Hay as his new manager. They also stated that Kazora will no longer go by the name Del Boy and would now be war. On October 22, White told Sky Sports that Kazora needed to sign a deal quick or he would look at other options. On November 1, the rematch was announced to take place on December 22 at the O2 Arena on Sky Sports box office. Kazora was ranked number 5 by the WBA and IBF, number 7 by the WBC and number 11 by the WBO at heavyweight. White won by KO in the 11th round, from a powerful left hook. 
White had luck in the early rounds, catching Kazora, but Kazora continued to work away, and received two warnings for low blows on White, which arguably switched the tempo of the fight. After the win, White called out Anthony Joshua and then stormed off mid-discussion. First reign as WBC Interim Heavyweight Champion White vs. Rivas following his 11th round knockout victory over Kazora, White called out unified heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua. Joshua, who was unusually booed by many of those present at the O2 Arena, said, If Deontay Wilder is serious and he is going to fight Tyson Fury and doesn't want to become undisputed champion, Dillian, you will get a title shot. On January 12, 2019, White revealed that he had turned down a severe lowball offer from Joshua to fight him in a rematch. White did not reveal the figure, however, he claimed it was lower than what he received against Kazora in December 2018. White claimed the Joshua fight was dead and he was to look at other options, including a potential fight with Dominic Brazil for the WBC interim title, but Brazil challenged Deontay Wilder for the world title. WBC NAF, IBF International, and WBO NABO champion Oscar Rivas had enhanced his reputation as a danger man following his brutal KO of the former world title challenger Bryant Jennings in January. On the July 20, 2019, White and Rivas fought for the vacant WBC interim heavyweight title. Rivas was ranked number 5 by the WBO, number 7 by the WBA, number 8 by the IBF and number 10 by the WBC the fight took place at the O2 Arena in London. It was agreed the winner of the fight would become the mandatory for the WBC title held by Deontay Wilder, even though White had held the WBC's number one ranking for over a year. During the first few rounds of the fight, Rivas walked forward while White used his long jab to keep him at bay. White was rocked by Rivas a few times but came back quickly with his own combinations that made Rivas cover up and in the ninth round Rivas dropped White which he blamed on him crossing his legs while backing up. White went on to win by UD and was later suspended of the WBC interim title after a drugs test came back with inconclusive results. He was later reinstated in December after being fully cleared before the fight against Marius Walk. White vs. Walk on December 7. 2019, White faced Mario Schwach on the Andy Ruiz Jr. vs. Anthony Joshua 2 undercard. White won the bout via UD, with two judges scoring the bout 97-93 and the third scoring at 98-93. White vs. Povetkin White was scheduled to defend his WBC interim title against Alexander Povetkin on May 2, 2020, however, Due to the COVID-19 pandemic the event was rescheduled for August 22nd at the Matchroom Sport headquarters in Brentwood, Essex. Prior to the rescheduled fight, White split with longtime coach Mark Tibbs. He promoted Xavier Miller from his team to head coach. Povetkin was ranked number 6 by the ring and number 9 by the WBC at heavyweight. White lost the fight via knockout in the fifth round, losing his WBC interim title and mandatory position for Tyson Fury's WBC title. He had started off well and controlled the fight in the first four rounds, knocking Povetkin down twice in the fourth round. However, just 30 seconds into the following round, Povetkin landed an uppercut which left White flat on his back, prompting the referee to call an immediate halt to the contest. Second reign as WBC interim heavyweight champion White vs. Povetkin 2 An immediate rematch with Alexander Povetkin was scheduled for November 21, 2020, but was pushed back to March 27, 2021 when Povetkin tested positive for COVID-19. With fans in attendance, the fight took place in Gibraltar and was won by White via technical knockout in the fourth round. The win meant that White regained the WBC interim heavyweight title. Following the fight's conclusion, his promoter Eddie Hearn reaffirmed interest in staging a fight between White and former WBC champion Deontay Wilder, calling a potential Wilder vs. White showdown a stadium fight, that's a colossal fight. White vs. Fury on September 15, 2021. It was reported that terms had been agreed between White and Otto Wallen for a bout on October 30 at the O2 Arena in London for White's WBC interim. Heavyweight title
However, a mere 10 days before the fight was scheduled to occur, it was reported that the fight had been called off due to White suffering a shoulder injury. White ultimately did not reschedule the bout against Wallen, opting instead to wait for a shot at undefeated WBC and the ring champion Tyson Fury, who himself had previously fought and defeated Wallen in September 2019. On December 30, 2021, WBC President Mauricio Suleiman, who had ordered Fury to defend his WBC title against White, ruled that the champion Fury would be entitled to 80% of the purse, compared to White's 20% as the challenger. Suleiman had set a deadline of January 11, 2022 for purse bids, as the two fighters' camps could not agree to terms. However, this deadline was pushed back multiple times, in part due to ongoing negotiations from Fury's team who were trying to secure the fight for the undisputed heavyweight championship against undefeated WBA, Super, IBF and WBO heavyweight champion Alexander Yusik. A fight between Fury and Yusik did not materialize, as deposed former champion Anthony Joshua was unwilling to step aside to allow the two champions to fight. The deadline for the Fury White purse bids was ultimately scheduled for January 28, 2022, when it was announced that Frank Warren's Queensbury Promotions had won the rights to promote the fight, with a winning bid of £41,025,000, beating out the £32,222,222 bid submitted by Eddie Hearn's Matchroom. Warren's bid was reported to be the highest successful purse bid in boxing history. The first press conference for the fight took place on March 1 at Wembley Stadium, with White absent. White's lawyer stated that his client would not be partaking in promoting the fight, as we still do not have things resolved. Despite his opponent's non-attendance, Fury as usual was in full showman mode, declaring even Tyson Fury versus his own shadow cells, and promising that the fight is going to be a Ferrari racing a Vauxhall Corsa. When asked about White's no-show, Fury opined, he's definitely shown the white flag in my estimation. In addition, he stated that his bout against White would be the final fight of his professional career, promising to retire after the fight, I'm a two-time undisputed world champion. I have £150 million in the bank and nothing to prove to anybody. Tickets for the fight went on sale on March 2. 85,000 of the 90,000 available tickets were sold within the first three hours, prompting Fury's promoter Frank Warren to begin the process of applying to the local authorities to expand the capacity to 100,000 fans, which would make Fury White the largest post-war boxing attendance in the history of the United Kingdom. The contest ultimately took place in front of a record-breaking crowd of 94,000 fans, 4,000 more than the attendance of Anthony Joshua vs. Vladimir Klitschko which also took place at Wembley Stadium in 2017, thus setting a new attendance record for a boxing match in Europe. White unexpectedly boxed the first round in the southpaw stance, which was unusual for the primarily orthodox fighter. After a cautious first three minutes, Fury returned the favor at the start of the second round by switching between the southpaw and orthodox stances. The champion found success with the jab and check hook. In the fourth round, White was cut over his right eye after a clash of heads. Fury continued to dominate the fight, landing a straight right in the fifth round which appeared to momentarily stun the challenger. With around 10 seconds left of the sixth round, Fury landed a left jab, followed by a right uppercut which sent White sprawling to the canvas. Although White was able to beat the count and rise to his feet, the referee deemed it unsafe for him to continue, halting the fight after 2 minutes and 59 seconds of the sixth round, declaring Fury the winner by sixth-round technical knockout. At the time of the stoppage, White was behind on the judges' scorecards with 49 to 46, 48 to 47, and 50 to 45. Post-title career White vs. Franklin the bout was held at the Wembley Arena, London, England, on November 26, 2022, and White won via majority decision by the scores of 115 to 115 and 116 to 112 twice. On July 7, 2023, it was announced that White would fight old rival Anthony Joshua on August 12 in a rematch of their bout in 2015, which resulted in Joshua getting the win. 
On August 5, 2023, it was announced that White had received a positive drug test and later it was announced that he would be replaced by Robert Hellenius in the fight. An investigation later found the positive drug test to be a result of a contaminated supplement and White was cleared to resume his boxing career. White vs. Hammer After 16 months of inactivity, White faced Christian Hammer at the TF Royal Hotel in Castlebar, Ireland on March 17, 2024, St. Patrick's Day, Hammer failed to get up from his stool for the start of the fourth round, handing White the win via corner retirement. Personal life White has two sons and one daughter. He had his first child at 13, making him one of the youngest birth fathers on record. He has highlighted his early boxing idols as including Jack Dempsey, Sonny Liston, Archie Moore, Lennox Lewis and James Tony.